Welcome to Hyperspace Prospector. Before we get into Ki Adi Mundi, I want to talk about the potential Plo Koon cameo. It took a little while to track this down because I usually surf the internet on my phone and it just was not working properly for me on StarWars.com. But I pulled my laptop out and sure enough, go to the episode guide for day and the trivia gallery specifically. The Jedi who joins the search party is a female of the same species as Jedi Master Plo Koon. Her name is Ithia Pan. I love that there is some sort of a cameo for a Keldor Jedi. I am mildly disappointed it was not Plo Koon because I love him so much. And now I'm worried she's going to be a red shirt and in next episode, we'll not make it. Please stay alive, Ithia. I then wanted to confirm Ki Adi Mundi. I did not see anything on StarWars.com, so I went over to Disney Plus again and watched the credits. In tiny text, Derek Arnold. So it is confirmed. I think this is kind of exciting. Because we never really had his age confirmed canonically. Obviously in Legends he's younger, but that's just well-written fanfic at this point, unfortunately. As much as I love Mara Jade. So we finally have a canonical age for his character. And that puts him in the older set of the Jedi Council in the prequels, which is awesome. For me, this makes Order 66 that much more poignant because they've been around for centuries. They saw the levelers come and go. Whatever's going on here with Acolyte happening. They got overconfident, basically. Started blindly following the Republic wherever they went. As a result, we see pushback from people like Qui-Gon. Even Count Dooku going, The Jedi have become corrupt. They're no longer serving the people. They just do whatever the Chancellor tells them to. And this set them up for their fall. The other question that has been brought up, what about his famous line? My only conclusion can be that it was a Sith Lord. Impossible. The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. I don't see a problem with that in Acolyte. We don't know who Darth Teeth is. We're just calling him Darth Teeth. There is a high probability this is simply a fallen dark Jedi. Nothing to do with the Sith. In fact, one interesting theory is that Master Indara faked her death. And she is actually the one behind the mask. And that she was influenced by that dark side whatever it was that we saw in the flashback. I don't think that's what's going to happen, although it would be cool. I'm just trying to show another theory of how it could not be a Sith Lord. Jedi Survivor. We watched a High Republic Jedi bleed a saber red right in front of Cal. Just because the lightsaber is a reddish color does not mean they are a Sith Lord. Anyone can bleed a saber if they're angry and upset enough, or if they use a filter like Ram did. There might have been an influence of Sith philosophy, might have read some of their literature. I don't personally think it is a Sith Lord. That has never been a theory of mine. Now let's say I'm completely wrong. It is a Sith Lord. I still actually don't have a problem with this line. The Jedi also have a very long history of covering stuff up. Case in point. The Levelers. In Phase 2 of the High Republic, there is a very extensive, lengthy encounter with Levelers. There were Jedi present. They knew about them. They knew their effects in detail. And then they covered the whole thing up. To the point where in Phase 1, we're reading about it, and more Jedi come in, and they're like, how strange. We can't read the records. What happened? What are they hiding? And then Starlight Beacon falls. Now, there were a variety of factors behind that, obviously, but a significant one is that the Jedi Order chose to brush levelers under the rug. We're seeing that with Acolyte right now. We have this group that's going, okay, 
What's going on right now is super embarrassing. Let's not tell anyone. We don't want like the Senate and the Republic to find out about this. They're repeating the process. They are hiding what is going on with the twins. Did they learn nothing from the Nihil? <sighs> what I'm trying to say is that you can't entirely trust the Jedi Council to tell the truth. And they don't like Qui-Gon. He's constantly challenging them. So when this upstart shoves his way in and is like, I think it's the Sith Lord or whatever, they're like, no. It's just Qui-Gon. Not to mention going back to the Acolyte. Did you see the looks he was serving to Vernestra and Master Soul? He was in the background, like, mean girling it. Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. He is the Regina George of the Jedi Council. I wonder how he reacted to Elzar being invited onto the council. I kind of want to be at that meeting with popcorn. You know who should be on the council? Elzar Man. That's how I see his reaction anyway. <laughs> to end this complete ramble, I love the fact that he is in the High Republic. It explains a lot. And I don't think there's any problem with his line about the Sith Lords. Let's wait for the rest of Acolyte to come out, for us to even know that there are Sith involved, because we don't know right now. After that, we can re-examine this. Because right now, certain parts of the fandom sound like, hey, you want to buy some death sticks? And the rest of us are like, no, go home and rethink your life.